Welcome back from the break, dear viewers. Hope you enjoyed the um, discussion we had with Brother Ibrahim Ansari on the Ziara. Um, now we have um, a hope that you'll enjoy the upcoming discussion that we're going to have with Brother Bilal Ali, um, and we're going to be discussing psychosis. So please join me in welcoming Brother Bilal. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Good, good, good. So um, psychosis is, uh, you know, it's quite a thrown around term, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, can be derogatory, can be um, obviously in a clinical term we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, really, what is what is psychosis? What 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 is it? Who does it affect? Um, so psychosis is a mental health disorder. It has certain characteristics. We I hope we get to expand and, and discuss. Um, so sometimes people, pejoratively, in a, you know, use the term psycho. Yeah. Um, and possibly because somebody's experienced psychosis or because somebody's a psychopath, and people often get the two terms mi totally mixed up. Um, you know, psychopath is to do with somebody's personality, and um, yeah. it's not something that you would treat with, with uh, medication. It's, right. to, it's like a more of a personality disorder or, of sort. So but psychopath can have psychosis? Um, well, anybody can have psychosis, okay. but what I'm saying is that psychosis and somebody being a psychopath Different. Psychopathology are two different, different things. Mm. Yeah, one's to do with a mental health disorder, mm. and one is more akin to like somebody having a personality Personal. disorder. Okay, so psychosis is what we're discussing. Yes, um, and um, who does it affect? It can affect anybody in terms mm. of age, in terms of gender, in terms of social class, economic um, class, and uh, even uh, nationality or, or, or ethnicity. You know, people can get psychosis from a number of different walks of life, even young children, um, children as young as 10, although they're loathed, you know, psychiatrists are very reluctant to diagnose people that are very young, you know, even school children yeah. can have a diagnosis. What's the symptoms? Um, what is the, the condition? What does it, you know, if you say someone has psychosis, what, what is it? So the symptoms, um, it's quite interesting because uh, you have something called bipolar disorder and some mm. of the symptoms can be the same. Um, or similar, some mm -hmm. of the symptoms. There, there is sometimes overlap. So in terms of um, getting a diagnosis, it can take a long period of time, like sometimes even years, to get a complete um, diagnosis right. from a specialist. Okay. Yeah, because mm. it's not uh, a straightforward, a person's had one episode, mm. and then that means, yep, that's them. They, they have actually schizophrenia, you know, which, you know, because obviously um, psychosis can go on to become, how can I say, they become schizophrenia or manifest as a diagnosis of, of, of schizophrenia. But even in terms of stigma, um, the diagnosis of schizophrenia is less and less and less and less used mm. because the, the diagnosis can, can stigmatize people. And so, so what is turned to, um, what we get, get to hear people now is that they um, experience psychosis or, right. they have a or they have a diagnosis. Okay. But we don't talk about people being a psychotic yes. or a schizoid or anything yeah. like that. You know? I mean, they're quite nasty terms, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, quite heavy and labelling terms. Yeah. Sometimes, you see, the power of terms is that they can become almost self-fulfilling prophecies in terms of people sort of unconsciously justify or explain everything in their life based on their, their, yeah. their uh, uh, diagnosis. So yeah. then it becomes limiting as yeah. opposed to it's there to explain. Yeah. It's supposed to be a signpost, but not a... Um, to say this is what's going on with this person yeah. as opposed to it's a direction to go in so so you know um an understanding of mine would be what um voices what kind of things are people experiencing yeah so some are? of the so some of the symptoms common symptoms are um or could say it's characterized by hallucinations delusions mm -hmm. and sometimes thought disorder so let's look at um hallucinations first of all so hallucinations are um let's say, experience something mm -hmm. that doesn't really exist, that's out of touch with reality. So a person can hear voices, different from hearing your own thoughts, talking to yourself in your head in terms of your thoughts, calculating your next move or whatever yeah. it is you're thinking. Because um, we have various ways that we, 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 we have cognitions as humans. But no, hearing extern an external voice that nobody else can hear, right. or, several, or, or several voices, it could be, um, visual hallucinations. Mm -hmm. It could be seeing things that other people don't see. It could be even in terms of feeling sensations, like as if, say, for example, people can hallucinate that they're being touched when they're not, oh, right. or even smelling um, like noxious substances. You know, people say, "Oh, can you smell gas?" Or yeah. I can smell chemicals. 
no such thing. So those are the, those are the hallucinations. Then you can have the delusions where people believe that they have they hold um, positions that are out of touch with reality. Like if to say, you know, sometimes people may think that mm. they, um, the radio's talking to them and that, that the radio's telling them that they are now the leader of the new world and that oh, aliens yeah. are invading the planet or mm. anything of that nature. So they can be delusional about reality. Mm. Or that we're, you know, yeah. we're, we're actually in a hospital, but they could say, no, I'm an inmate in a prison, and this is a prison, and, you know, he's a warden when it's a doctor, so they can be totally out of touch, they can be delusional. Are these symptoms, um, are they quite a sudden onset, or do they come over the, you know, time progressively? They can manifest themselves in a sudden, um, in a sudden onset, in a sense of um, somebody as not known to manifest these it, symptoms. Mm -hmm. However, um, they could be gradation, like people be withdrawing, people um, expressing strange ideas or unusual ideas, and go on to extreme things like the delusions. Um, but another, another symptom I want to mention is as well thought disorders, where people, they, you might see that when people are sort of um, talking yeah. and they're unable to stay on track with mm. a particular conversation. And I'm not talking about when people are excited and they just mm. jump from topic to topic like sometimes a group of friends do. I mean, in a sense where a person's talking to you about specific things, but they can't really, there's almost a frustration. They can't complete the narrative or the account or the subject matter before they go on to something totally unrelated, mm. in an unrelated way. And sometimes that's because they're struggling to have cohesive thoughts. Gosh, it's uh, quite a heavy, intense condition, isn't yeah. it? Um, yeah. So, if somebody was looking at um, a person that's actually experiencing this, is there a certain physical, because like perhaps you can explain, you know, Hollywood and, mm -hmm. you know, in the movies I'll show someone having a bit of a glazed look on their face and, you know, are, are, is that true or is it something? No, Holly, Hollywood um, is in the business of selling movies mm. and the mainstream press are in, in the business of, of selling newspapers or, or, or making news items interesting. So, um what you find is if that for example with psychosis people who are, who are psychotic are very unlikely to be you know statistically unlikely to be violent but they can be right and if they are violent and anybody's experiencing that you know get yeah. help call the authorities do what you, whatever sensible do what you have to do however they're, they're not that likely to be violent. But what happens is, oftentimes people are in institutions, they're released for the day so they can integrate into the community. And they may, for example, wander off, they may, get, they may forget, whatever the case. That might be something that happens often as they're dealing with their mental health condition and trying to gain some level of independence. That's not reported in the news, it's hardly newsworthy. Yeah. That happens often. But in the infrequent, rare, statistically minutiae of a chance of it happening, somebody's violent with a knife or something in the high street, that's what we see hits the headline. Yeah, true. So public perception is that everybody with psychosis is an axe murderer, X, Y, Z. Yeah. That's not the case. That is not the case. And so there's, there is no necessarily no glazed look or anything like that. It can come on, as I said, suddenly or it can, it can incrementally develop with signs and symptoms that go on to manifest um, as a psychotic episode. Uh, and it can be caused by genetics. Okay. Uh, it can be triggered by an extremely stressful event or series of events, you know, like somebody could lose two parents or, you know, something of that nature, some sort of life, yeah. ma massively life-changing um, external event, but it could, it could trigger an onset of psychosis. Are these all, is this all happening up here? Is it sort of the thought process? Is it sort of, or is it something that's just suddenly a chemical change? What is it that's actually triggering? Um, that's a good question. In terms of what's taking place, that may be more of a neurological question in terms of, like mm -hmm. you said, brain chemistry. So that's why you it, quite possibly, um, but I wouldn't like to say I'm not a neurologist, yeah. but in terms of brain chemicals, that is kind of like, there's some shift, but what is a shift? Why the yeah. shift is taking place? Yeah. How does it take place? It's hard, you know? isn't it? It's um, only because I'm aware of people that, you know, have um, family members. Um, and it's, it's sad that, you know, over time when you perhaps don't pick up the symptoms initially, mm -hmm. um, so a friend's um, child has it and, um, and, you know, he was withdrawing, he'd finished uni and he started to withdraw, he started looking into sort of more um, conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. became afraid to go out. Mm -hmm. And it was it sort of those things you think, okay, you know, I remember the mother saying, you know, it's, um, you know, he's just reciting more, he's doing more. But then slowly, slowly now is the point that he doesn't like anybody in the house. Mm -hmm. 
um, and they're managing it, you know, it's managed, but it's difficult because there have been some life adjustments that people aren't allowed to, they're not allowed to have guests in the house. Um, he doesn't even like members of the family being around and mm -hmm. noise. So, I mean, I'm sure it affects people in many, many different ways. For sure, um, for sure. So apart from what I've, you know, explained as in what a friend of mine goes through, what else can people go through that will, you know, although you're saying you're managing it in the wider community, it is impacting people's lives. Yeah, it? no, it can so, be very disruptive. And mm -hmm. if it's not treated, um, if it's not dealt with early, if it's not treated, um, I have a theory that it can almost become part of the person's personality. Right. So they've been living with the signs and sorry, not signs, but they've been living with symptoms of hearing voices, having delusions, or um, having hallucinations for such a long period of time. That's now them. So that when they are eventually brought for treatment and they receive medication, even if they don't have the um, voices there anymore, or they're not, not, not hallucinating, they've lived with this so much as now they are, um, how can I put it, they are like, that kind of whole dynamic is now part of their personality. So they're not back to themselves, or themselves is somebody with mental health problems, irrespective of the, um, mm. irrespective of the symptoms. It's almost like it's now defined their life or, you know, is mm. them. Mm. You know, so early intervention Important. is key because a lot of people have one psychotic episode in yeah. their life, whether they report it, whether it, or whether they don't. But you when know, you say psychotic, what they, what would happen to them? They would. So people have, you know, people have had. Um, I think in the past, for example, people used to call it a nervous breakdown. Yeah, okay. right. So I was thinking you were saying you know, people yeah. may have um, dabbled with uh, recreational drugs and mm. had a bad trip had a bad reaction, you know? Because some people have a genetic, um, have a, a genetic, a higher genetic propensity to become, to, to experience psychosis. Right. Um, they have a gen genetic, let's yeah. say just genetic disposition towards it, but it's not triggered. Yeah. But if they were to come under extreme stress, compared to the average population, yeah. remember the population, if they was to come under extreme stress, or they was to dabble with um, hallucinogenic drugs or mm. other recreational drugs, it could hit that, you know, it could kind of combine and they would become, and they could have a psychotic episode. But for some people, like I said, it's a one-off where they have, they, they think demons are chasing them or they have some bizarre sci-fi type of experience, they might be hospitalized, right. receive treatment, mm. stay away from recreational drugs, and they're fine. They're going to live regular lives. Okay. Never, to, never so to have another episode. If you say if somebody had a sort of nervous breakdown, they've got a very, very stressful, you know, um, situation at home. Yeah. Um, and then they. That just, term was a catch-all term. Like, yeah. It might mean emotional burnout or okay. a psychotic episode. It, it could kind of cover a load of things. Right. But you know, they used to yeah. throw that term around. Yeah. You know, ten, twenty, you know, plus years back. Course. That was a kind of catch-all yeah. term. Yeah. I remember. I mean, just so many people. You, you hear stories and. Um, you know, there was somebody that used to live near us and, uh, you know, suddenly the, the girl was, you know, married very young, lived with her in-laws and suddenly she just, you know, I remember the family saying that she's just had a, um, you know, psychotic episode and then she was um, admitted into hospital. But again, it was like apparently she's breaking things and just lost the plot is what yeah. the family had yeah. said. So um, it's unfortunate because of that pressure that perhaps from a young age. But is it, is it we've got literally a minute left. Um, is it treatable? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, some people recover with no treatment. Okay. Um, one episode, there is treatment available. Sometimes it might mean in 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 patients. What they have is um something called it's many in many boroughs in the UK they have something which is called early intervention team. Oh, so yes. if the person's yeah. flagged up, they um they assess. Psychiatrists may intervene, may diagnose medication. They're allocated a psychiatric nurse who will support them when they go back in the community. Right. And one of the most important things is what they call psychoeducation, where mm. the person's taught and explained in detail what this disorder is and it's kind of work out a treatment plan and kind of things that will help them. And it, it almost, let's, for want of a better term, normalizes. So they understand, okay. This happens to people, there's help out there because part of when people are unwell is, is, is that loneliness of, yeah. oh my God, I don't know what's happening to yeah. me and I don't know what to do. Yeah. And it's different when you have a professional saying, listen, Definitely. these are the, these are the yeah. things that will happen to you. You can expect these or if you, if, you, if you experience this, this is not unusual in your situation. These are the things that can be helpful and, you know, let's gain some, as well as your medication, some different activities so you can channel your mind, channel your, channel your energies and, and people... Um, return to functional lives, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, it's been very informative, definitely. Um, inshallah, 
if people need any further information, again, have a re have do some research. Um, if you're concerned about anybody, then obviously approach the right authorities. Um, thank you so much. Um, inshallah, we'll see you another morning. Inshallah. inshallah. Um, and next up, we have um, go to the kitchen, my favorite part, and we're joining Sister Sana and Sister Fahima.